listening. Could it make you a better parent, a better leader, even perhaps a better person? Could listening to motivating fitness programs get you fit? Could listening inspire you to start something new? These are thought starter phrases Scott could adapt based on show topic or theme. There's never been a better time to start listening on Audible, baby! And there's never a better time to win cash by answering cues than right now on Bookworm Trivia Night, presented by our good friends at Audible. Listen up, HQties. I am your host reading Henrik Ibsen's Ghosts, The Hound of the Askervilles, F. Scott Fitzgowski, live from Pemberley, Oscar Wilde and out, getting lit. Well, all you bookworms, including Amanda and George Paul, who just gave birth to triplets, Mazel, Samantha Payne, Vanessa Noguera, and Chad's wife, Megan, and Dana in Calgary, celebrating B-Days today on Pi Day, Danny DeVito Day. We had that earlier today in HQ. And now it's Bookworm Night Day, Audible Night. Make sure you blow out your candles, by the way, all you birthday kids. Do it Romney style. And make sure you got your sound turned all the way up. Tonight, all right, because I have an extra special edition. Turn it up. Get turned. This is a special edition of HQ just for you. I will be asking 12 audio-assisted questions featuring excerpts from audiobooks you could easily find on Audible. And if you get them all right, you'll be going to bed with a heavier wallet because you'll be splitting our jackpot cash prize of 5,000 Da Vinci Codes, 5,000 Dante's Infernos, $5,000 plus. We'll throw in a million little pieces. Was that book discredited? Sure, but you can still find it on Audible because Audible gives you access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, motivation, mysteries, thrillers, memoirs, and erotic thrillers. And the best part is you can listen on any device, anytime, anywhere, at home, at the gym, on your commute, or just on your way to the library. Do you have an extra life? Use that life tonight. It keeps you in the game if you get it wrong. You can only use it once per game, not in the final question. Maybe use one tonight. Use one, I don't know, on Sunday night because, uh, we're doing the one. Uh-huh. HQ's going back to find the one. One winner takes all. $10,000 going to just one of you. I don't stop asking questions until the one HQ is standing. And, and breaking news. Breaking news. We're going back to Hogwarts, kids. Harry Potter, part two. Next Thursday night, March 21st. Oh, yeah. We're doing it. You wanted it. You wanted it the first time. We're doing it again a second time. I, I assume you still want it the second time. But forget, all right, look, forget the Wizarding World right now, okay? It is time to visit the Wizarding World on this Thursday night. Let's get down to the nitty gritty with over 400,000 of you in the game live around the world. Let's get this special Audible show on the road. Kimuro numero uno. Who is this autobiographical narrator? Listen, listen. Now she had me do the Shakespeare Festival. It was a monologue, so I played all the characters. I was doing pretty well at some of the smaller competitions, but then there was the big one, and I won first place. Okay, it's so the first question there, so we gave you a little more than just the audio. Who is that narrator? Jane Austen, Tiffany Haddish, or Winston Churchill? Oh, if you loved her in Girls Trip, you might want to get a copy of The Last Black Unicorn, a book of personal essays narrated by its author, star of stage and screen, Tiffany Haddish. You saw her there. You heard her voice. She narrated her own autobiography. That's how that works, folks. 328,242. She ready. And you're ready for Q2, but uh, really, 11,000 thought that was Winston Churchill. I mean, Jane Austen... Winston Churchill. Q2. This novel is called A Clockwork What? Mango? There were three Devochkas sitting at the counter all together, but there were four of us Malchicks, and it was usually like one for all and all for one. Usually like... What's that novel? A Clockwork What? Mango, banana, or orange? Hmm? You shouldn't even need the audio for this one. <laughs> Come on, A Clockwork What? It was a highly controversial Anthony Burgess novel, 1962, turned into perhaps an even more controversial Stanley Kubrick film in 1971, and now a rather uncontroversial pedestrian HQ question in 2019. Orange is the new answer at Q2. 303,735. Knew this one. Very good. You got your droogs. You're ready for a bit of the old ultraviolence at Q3. The rest of you, 
Uh, go to the milk bar. Q3, who wrote this novel? Listen, listen. Well, everybody does that way, Huck. Tom, it don't make no difference. I ain't everybody. All right, who wrote that novel? Ernest Hemingway, Charles Dickens, or Mark Twain? Mm -mm. You getting the hang of this now? This is fun, this is new, this is different. I love this. Audio questions here. All right, the answer, of course, not, not Samuel Clemens. I'm not putting the birth name. I'm putting Mark Twain, the pen name. Of course, Mark Twain, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. A modern day, what do you mean, mean stride? 277,632 of you got a mean, mean pride. Never the twain shall meet for the 25,000 who are eight, but all aboard this twain train, we're going to Q4. A portrait of the artist as a young man was written by a man from which place? Ireland, Wales, or Scotland? 25,000 out there. Aw, oh, shucks to Huck. Huck this quiz is what you're probably saying. James Joyce knows a thing or two about being a young man and a young artist. Before writing this debut novel in 1916, he had a short story collection called Dubliners under his belt. Should probably give it away now. His mother had a nicer smell than his father. She played on the piano the sailor's hornpipe for him to dance. Dubliners, Ireland, yeah. Colin Farrell there doing the audio on the audio book. Shout out Colin Farrell. Also in Dumbo. <laughs> Happy Bloomsday to 119,329 who knew James Joyce, wrote the portrait of the artist of the young man, and then also knew James Joyce from Ireland. Eringo Bra, and we're going to Q5. Getting lit, extra lit tonight. This is the beginning to a classic novel by what author? Listen. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. These clocks go to 13, baby. Was it George Orwell, Ray Bradbury, or Arthur C. Clarke? Novel by what author? Orwell, Bradbury, Clarke. The year may have passed as long ago, but many of the dystopian premonitions in this book have never felt truer than they do today. One could argue we're living in Oceania right now. I'm talking about 1984, of course, by George Orwell. The year of my birth, 100,758. Avoiding Big Brother here at Q5. The rest of you going down a memory hall. Didn't remember Orwell. Clocks going all the way to 13, and we're turning this quiz to 6. Q6, the halfway point. Which of these novels features a protagonist named Santiago, the kite runner, the Da Vinci Code, or the alchemist? Now, this book was a major hit, being translated from Portuguese, eh? To English, we're talking about the young shepherd Santiago featured in Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. The boy's name was Santiago. Dusk was falling as the boy arrived with his herd at an abandoned church. The roof had fallen in long ago, and an enormous sycamore had grown on the spot where the sacristy had once stood. Obrigado. It's Portuguese. Eh? That's, all, that's all I remembered from my two days in Lisbon. 77,475, alchemizing, hypnotizing, smizing, turning, I can't smize, turning Q6 into gold tonight, getting Q7. The, the author of this novel did not also write which of these, Emma Jane Eyre. Oh, right. It is the truth, <laughs> universally acknowledged, that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Aha! That audio clip. What is that? <laughs> the author of this novel did not write which of these, Emma, Jane Eyre, or Persuasion, did not also write. So you heard the author there. Did not also write which of these. Ain't this something, guys? Jane Eyre and Jane Austen. You think, what? They, they sound similar. Well, one's a novel by Charlotte Bronte, and the other is a novelist of Emma, Persuasion, and Pride and Prejudice. From where we heard that clip there, Jane Eyre is your answer here. 54,571 of you knew that one. Jane says, bow, bow, bow. I'm done with Sergio. I can't hit the high notes tonight. My Q8 for the 54,000 left. Which of these Neil Gaiman works did not begin as a comic book or graphic novel? The Sandman, Mr. Punch, or American Gods? Now, this one seems like it could have been a graphic novel when it was published in 2001, but it was just a regular old fantasy novel without illustrations. Boring! Not only are there no happy endings, 
There aren't even any endings. No happy endings? Tell that to Robert Kraft. American Gods is your answer here. And we got a savage question after a savage joke. Q8 taking out 42,000 plus of you. Oof, ripped out of the book tonight. 16,008. You're still listening. You're still listening to me asking you questions, literary questions, on this audible night. Q9. What Stephen King novel features a nightmare spider from beyond time and space? The Stand, Pet Cemetery, or It? You know, when not furiously tweeting, Stephen King has been bringing us a lot of freaky deaky stories over the years from his hideout in Bangor, Maine. Richard Bachman, too. But the only place you'll find a trans-dimensional spider like this is in It. Then Beverly was shrieking, clinging to Bill, as it raced down the gossamer curtain of its webbing, a nightmare spider from beyond time and space. A nightmare spider from bed, bath, and beyond time and space. 23,585. This is it. Bow. Make no mistake where you are. This is it. Mm. It's not it for you yet. You got three questions left to win tonight's game of HQ. $5,000 on the line. Q10, here we go. The end of this best-selling novel famously ends with what? Listen. My name isn't of Fred. I have another name, which nobody uses now because it's forbidden. Did you hear that? What? What novel ends with that? The ending of this novel ends with what? Textbook chapter, presentation transcript, or rhyming poem. That novel famously ends with what? You just heard it. Folks, when I say Margaret, you say Atwood. Margaret. Margaret. This Canadian literary giant penned The Handmaid's Tale, the truly dark and dystopian sci-fi look at the not-too-distant future, and it ends with a presentation transcript. It ends with a presentation transcript. Yes, it does. 12,181 of you knew that one. Maybe you're not so familiar with the book or the audiobook, and you're more of a Hulu original series fan. Shout out Lizzie Moss. We got two questions left, the penultimate one here at Q11. Which of these titles is part of the Outlander series? The Work of Stars, Stolen Time, or Drums of Autumn? Now, we ignorant Americans pronounce it Gabaldon. 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 In Spain, it's Gabaldon. That's the proper... In, anyway, Diana Gabaldon. All right, you know her. She's just churning these books out. Now it's a TV show. The time-traveling Outlander books march to the beat of their own drums. The Drums of Autumn, that is. Your face is my heart, Sassenach, he said softly, and love of you is my soul. Drums of autumn. I'm trying to do the breakdown of Frankenstein there. 8,580 of you marched to the beat of your drummer, little drummer boys and girls. You have one question left now. One question standing between you and the victory circle. Is it going to be winner, winner, chicken dinner for you tonight? Q12, it all boils down to this. Can you hear it coming? Can you hear that question? $5,000 going once, going twice, going to you at Q12. How does this famous quotation from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein end? Nothing is so painful to the human mind as a... Frankenstein? Why did... Frankenstein! Frankenstein, great and sudden change, love torn asunder, or short-lived friendship. It's not Harvey Frankenstein. Victor Frankenstein. There's my Frankenstein. You might think nothing is so painful like losing HQ. But even worse, great and sudden change. Nothing is so painful to the human mind as a great and sudden change. Yeah, <laughs> so painful if you got it wrong, but it feels so good. For all the winners tonight, 5,430 of you, here's a great and sudden change. You just won HQ, baby! <laughs> what happens when we do two shows in one day after not doing that for a long time. You lose 
You lose your voice, you get a little hoarse, you can't hit the high notes tonight. But 5,430 of you certainly did. You listened up and you listened well. C. Gullier, Mr. SCR, Fancy Boxer, Derek V. Mick Shiplet Blick. Oh, I know, I can't pronounce this. It. from X Men, right? Kelly Alex, Trace, Kiko Panda. Congratulations, just under a dollar. 92 or 93 cents going to all of you. How about that holler for a dollar? Thanks to Audible. You know, you could you, you could afford a free trial with those 92 or 93 cents even. That's how much you want tonight. You can actually afford a free trial with Audible. Any one of you can. That's the joke. It's free. Check it out. Thank you, Audible. Try it. You'll love it. I have a series I produced on there, actually. Sklars and Stripes. Yes, I produced with the Sklar Brothers. The most fun I've ever had. Check that out only on Audible. Audible has the most inspiring minds, the most compelling stories, the best place to listen. Remember, if you want to listen to more HQ, it's coming your way. 9.30 tonight. Ten minutes from now. Count it. Anna Roisman coming to you with words. The one is happening this Sunday. That's right. Winner take all $10,000. Harry Potter next Thursday. I told you that. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow because you can't stop fighting the fight. There's no slow in this trivia train. Until I see you manana, I've been Scott Rogowski. Signing off for tonight. Saying... Ba da 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 da